yes, Mr. Edwards, I'm, I'm <laughs> fully aware of the new deadline policy. I'll have it on time. Oh, 10% salary penalty, yes, I, I know, but I'm simply buried in work and, <laughs> and with my, my sister's baby here. Good grief. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Edwards. Come in. Arthur, this may be the last time you ever put me on hold. I think something's burning. See about it, will you, Sonia? I've got my publisher on the phone. Uh, yes, Mr. Edwards. I, I know. Hold on. David, would, would, uh, yeah. Uh-huh, I understand. Oh, well, there won't be any problem with that. I... Oh, of course. You don't have to worry about... No, no, listen, listen. I'm organizing the introduction to the book. Honestly, Arthur, I can't picture you organizing much of anything. <laughs> right, goobity boobity baby oh, No, I, I don't think we should introduce the book with your personal success story. <laughs> You're kidding, I hope. How to succeed in publishing without really trying? <gasps> Tell me how. Uh, no, no, I can't just force it in. See, this book is not about publishing. Uh, things must fit in an orderly manner where they belong. Uh, we'll speak later. Goodbye. Just look at this place. Can't you put your life into some kind of order? Well, things have just been getting a little ahead of me today. Mm. Look, would you take David back down the block to my sister? She should be home by now. Oh, sure. Itty bitty baby go bye-bye? And speak properly to him, would you? You would prefer I quoted Shakespeare, maybe. Oh. Well, it is nobler to suffer the bows and arrows of... Slings and arrows. Slings and arrows. David, we go see Mommy? Go see Mommy? Let's go see Mommy. Let's go see Mommy. You ready? Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Here we okay. go. Bye, David. See you again. Yeah, Sonia's right about order, actually. It's as important to good writing as it is to life. When, when someone reads a paragraph that has no clear order or direction, well, that person encounters the same confusion Sonia did when she walked in here. A paragraph should tell you clearly just what it's about right from the beginning. Then the ideas should follow in a logical manner. The transitions from one sentence to the next should be clear and smooth. Uh, look at this paragraph I wrote for the introduction of my book. A well-written application can help persuade an employer to hire a prospective employee. Good writing skills are valuable to the job applicant. Correct use of language implies that the applicant is capable and intelligent. Every paragraph should have one unifying idea. What is the topic that unifies these sentences? The sentences explain how effective writing can help you get a job, right? But we don't find out that's the main idea until the middle of the paragraph. Good writing skills are valuable to the job applicant. If we put that sentence at the beginning, we immediately establish the main idea for the paragraph. And do you see how the next two sentences support the idea? They tell why good writing skills are valuable to the job applicant. First, a well-written application can help persuade an employer to hire a prospective employee. And second, correct use of language implies that the applicant is capable and intelligent. You see, there's a proper place for each sentence within a paragraph. Just as there's a proper place for all this mess what am I going to do with all this stuff? Hello, Arthur. Mr. Edwards is out for a minute. He'll be right back. Okay. I'll wait. By the way, that recipe you gave me last week, I followed your directions exactly. And it was awful. That's odd. It always works for me. Well, I did just what you said. Put two cups of rice in boiling water, allow it to simmer for two hours, brown the onions and peppers, add the chicken, cover, cook for 15 minutes, or until it falls apart on a fork. 
chicken cooked 15 minutes doesn't fall apart on a fork. It bleeds. Oh, rice simmered for two hours makes wallpaper paste. Oops. Mm -hmm. You were supposed to simmer the chicken for two hours and cook the rice 15 minutes. Oh, sentences should be arranged in order of when something should happen. What do you do with the rice while the chicken is simmering? For the rice after you start the chicken, for Pete's sake. Right, the speed demon. There. <clears throat> Brown the onions and peppers, add the chicken, cover with water, allow it to simmer for two hours. When almost ready, put two cups of rice in boiling water, cook for 15 minutes or until the chicken falls apart on a fork. Finally, a well-ordered recipe. Oh, I should frame this. Mr. Edwards should have been back by now. Why don't you wait in his office? Good idea. And he had the nerve to yell at me about being late. He should have been here 15 minutes ago. He isn't any more organized than Brenda was when she typed that recipe. She forgot that organizing any paragraph means putting the sentences in proper arrangement by time, space, importance. That gives your written ideas a logical progression or flow, if you will. In your workbook, you'll find paragraphs that need rearranging. Just ask yourself, how could these sentences be put together so they flow sensibly from one to the next? <clears throat> Ah. Never trust a man that talks to himself. But... Got your pencil ready, my boy? Huh? My Climb to Success. Chapter One. Oh, I've been studying the language so hard, and I've heard you say that I'm bright. Yes, but with Mr. Lacey, you have to prove it. Oh, well, then I'll go talk to him right away. Wait, he's a busy man. Besides, you have to make a formal request in writing to apply for the supervisor's training program. Oh, all right, I'll start a letter. Good. <laughs> Arthur, my boy, did you figure out a place to put the part about my going from peon to president? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, personal stories about publishing success, no matter how grand, just don't fit the central idea and purpose of this book. Who's publishing your book? Well, uh, you are, sir. But, um, I then find a place to fit it in. Let's see. The president of one prominent publishing firm worked his way up from the mailroom in six months. He married the daughter of the chairman of the board and was soon promoted. The chairman of the board sent his daughter to an expensive school which she detested. Oh. No, no. I'm not selling out to Mr. Edwards. I'm going to use this story as a practice exercise in the back of the book. I'm certainly not going to try to force his irrelevant story into my introduction. You know, relevancy is an important element of paragraphs, too. Sometimes people will add facts or statements to paragraphs 
where they simply don't belong. Look at this paragraph again. Is there a sentence in this passage that doesn't fit right? What does the girl's education have to do with anything? Nothing. Just as Mr. Edwards' life has nothing to do with my book. So, remember when you're doing the practice exercises in your workbook, take out any sentence which is irrelevant to the topic of your paragraph. Time, Sonia. What are you working on so diligently? Ah, it's that letter to Mr. Lacey. Oh. Would you take a look? Sure. I think my organizational skills make me a good candidate for a supervisor. I can keep an office running smoothly. And in Europe, where I was born, there are many government offices which must be run smoothly. Sonia, what does being born in Europe have to do with your skills in organizing? That shouldn't be there at all, or at least not in the paragraph. Well, I, I know about the offices back home. Mm -hmm. I used to hear father talking, and I just thought I'd throw that in. In good writing, you just don't throw something in. What's the main idea of the paragraph? Well, I guess it's, it's that I feel that I am qualified to be a supervisor. Good. Now think of something that supports that idea. Initiative. Mm-hmm. Organizational skills. Right. I have initiative and organizational skills. Last month, when we received almost 100 complaints in one week, I worked all weekend to organize the reports and file them into categories for action. Good. You're supporting the fact that you are qualified. One, you showed initiative by putting in the extra time to finish the job. Two, you showed that you have the skills to organize and file. You use facts, not just vague promises, and you're developing these ideals logically, one after the other in a particular order. Each sentence develops from the idea in the sentence before it and explains it some more or adds something to it. Sort of like working down from a main idea to more specific ones? Right. <gasps> like an upside-down pyramid. That's right. Now let's see what you've written next. Okay. Likewise in importance is my good record with this company. I rarely miss work by the reason of illness and often am the recipient of commendation from my supervisor. Well, that's a little wordy. Have you ever said to anyone, likewise and important? <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is writing. If you wouldn't say it in conversation, then it probably sounds awkward to a reader's ear as well. Mm. How about changing that to equally important? Okay. Equally important. Mm -hmm. is my good record with this company. And look at this next sentence. I rarely miss work by the reason of illness and often am the recipient of commendation from my supervisor. By the reason of? Can't you think of a better way to say that? Hmm, by reason of. Because of illness? Better. Or could you say due to illness? Okay. I rarely miss work due to Illness. And since illness and receiving commendation aren't too closely related, why don't you start a new sentence there? All right. I often am the recipient of commendation from my supervisor. It's wordy. Remember, get rid of as many extra words or necessary words as possible. Mm. How about this? My supervisor often commends my work. I guess it has deserved it once in a while. <laughs> hey.
Hey, I hope you didn't cut off too much. You know how my sister is about that kid. No, <laughs> she trusts me. And so does the booksy wooksy wooksy doo Oh, Sonia, please. He's going to have to speak English one day, you know? Would you prefer him to study your workbook? I'm sure he will enjoy that. Uh -huh. Oh, come, David. Let's look at the computer. You want to? Come on. Let's go see Uncle Arthur. Uncle Arthur. Come here, David. Come on. Right here. Let's look at this. A good understanding of English grammar is necessary in other studies. In history, the student writes term papers and essays. In science, he writes research reports. To live in modern society... Oh. Good English, isn't it, David? But I think there is a little boo-boo here. What? Where? Well, he is starting a new idea, a new topic here. To live in modern society demands good grammar skills. It is often necessary to write letters to creditors or insurance companies. The private citizen who writes effectively puts himself in a more powerful position. You see, David, he has been talking about how English is good for students, and then he starts going into how it's necessary for everyday life. Well, I haven't had time to proof it yet. Ah, uh -huh. anyway, David, David, I'm sure you could make it into a new paragraph, huh? Can you? Can you hit this button? Hit. Good. And then I'll hit this one. Ah-ha! Hey, it's child's play. <laughs> You're me. Ah-ha! <laughs> Mrs. Johnson, hmm? look. Mr. Lacey answered my letter, and he sent me an application for the supervisor training program. Why, that's great, Sonia. Yeah, yeah, but look what it says here. Write an essay in the space provided on why you want to enter the Lacey supervisor program. I've told you many times, Sonia, writing is going to become more and more important as you move up. I'm starting to believe you. Listen, would you take a look at my essay and tell me what you think so far? Sure. I've written a paragraph. Let's see. I would like to enter the Lacey Supervisor Training Program. Well, you're starting off with one problem that I can see. What? Your topic sentence is too general. Mr. Lacey's going to take one look at that and fall asleep. You know they say he sleeps through stockholders' meetings. Well, then, how should I liven it up? For one thing, be more specific. Of course you would like to enter the program. Otherwise, you wouldn't be applying. <laughs> True. Then how's this? Since I have been a customer service clerk with your company for more than a year, I feel ready to enter your supervisor training program. Very good. You're telling him something and establishing a concise direction in the paragraph. Uh-huh. And I go on to explain why I am ready. Look. I am now learning the new inventory system. When I first started, I learned to take complaints quickly. Several months ago, I successfully substituted for Mrs. Johnson for the period during which she was not here. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Well, basically, it's okay. All your sentences are supporting the topic sentence, explaining why you think you're ready for the program. Mm -hmm. But it's a little wordy and a little disorganized. In what way? Well, sentences should be arranged with an eye to their sequence of importance, our chronology. That's when they happened. Oh, so should I put them in order of time or importance? Well, it sort of depends. Wouldn't you say that each of these sentences is equally important? Yes. So why don't we put them in order of occurrence? Oh, all right. Then I should start with, when I first started, I learned to take complaints quickly. Is that right? That's right. When I first started, I learned to take complaints quickly. Then I should say, several months ago, I successfully substituted for Mrs. Johnson 
for the period during which she was not here. Yes, but that's a little awkward. How about for Mrs. Johnson during her absence? Okay, that sounds good. Several months ago, I successfully substituted for Mrs. Johnson during her absence. When I first started, I learned to take complaints quickly. Several months ago, I successfully substituted for Mrs. Johnson during her absence. I am now learning the new inventory system. That's good. But you could improve the flow by starting the last sentence with the transitional word, like finally. Okay. Finally. I am now learning the new inventory system. You sure are. Words like finally, meanwhile, furthermore, are called transitional words. They do more than just link the ideas together. They show how they relate. Look at the transitional words in this paragraph. Sonia has worked long hours to organize complaints. Likewise, she has substituted for her supervisor. But even so, her initiative and dedication have not been recognized by Mr. Lacey. Uh, at least, not yet. Those transitional words link and relate. But watch out. Use the wrong transitional word, and the reader is confused or sent off in the wrong direction entirely. Look for the problem in this passage. In her country, there is little opportunity for her to advance in a job. In our country, moreover, greater opportunity exists. The word moreover usually implies that you are going further with the same point. I didn't do that. I presented a contrasting point. Wrong word. A correct transition might be however. In our country, however, greater opportunity exists. There's a list of transitions in your workbook. Practice using them correctly to bring unity and coherence to your paragraphs. I'm glad you organized your kitchen before you asked me over to cook supper. I'm turning my life around. I've scheduled everything. Order is the order of the day. Well, I'm trying at any rate. Uh, well, one thing you could help me organize is the rest of this essay I have to write. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Now, this is the part where I start talking about my ideas for the customer service department. Uh-huh. If I were promoted to supervisor, I would use my experience working in the customer services department to solve some of its problems. Very good. Specific, concise, and to the point. A good topic sentence. Thanks. Next, I have... Saturday mornings, there are more customers than you have any other day. Hmm. Awkward. Try to get the word you out of the sentence. See if you can think of a way around it. How about Saturday mornings, there are more customers than any other day? Good. You can usually think of a better way if it feels like an awkward construction. The better way usually is simpler, too. What's next? Okay. They become impatient and complain more. I believe there should be at least two clerks to take complaints during these busy hours. That's pretty good. Except, how could you make it flow a little better from the last sentence? Mm. Should I start with and? It might be better to start with so or therefore. All right. Therefore, I believe there should be at least two clerks to take complaints during these busy hours. See how that works? Mm -hmm. It sort of connects the two ideas. <gasps> I'd better check supper. <laughs> hey, it's a good essay. Good luck. I hope you're beginning to get a sense of what makes a good unified paragraph and what doesn't. As you can see, it's not an absolute science. Often the way a paragraph is written depends on what you want to say and who you want to say it to. But when ideas are sloppily arranged, if there are no transitions, if concepts are thrown together without logical development, 
then you can be assured that your paragraph needs work. And learning to write a good paragraph only comes with practice. It often helps to, to let a friend or coworker read it. Someone else can sometimes see the inconsistencies or lack of logical development. They accepted me for the fall program. There was never a doubt in my mind. Oh, there was in mine. <laughs> Many. But now I can't wait to tell Arthur. I guess you think you're pretty clever using my story as an example of irrelevancy in paragraph structure. Oh, now, Mr. Edwards, I, I don't think... Nevertheless, so. you've written a good introduction. You're a good writer. If you weren't, I would have already fired you. Come on, Mr. Edwards. You promised lunch, remember? Okay, Brenda. See you later, Arthur. Things are sometimes best left in their original order. So when you do the practice exercises in your workbooks, look at each sentence carefully and judge whether it's in the proper place. Practice writing your own paragraphs. First, get your ideas down. Second, decide what the main idea is and write it in a good beginning sentence. Third, put your other ideas in sentences and organize them to make the most logical presentation to support your main idea. It takes practice, but start out step by step. Local funding for GED on TV has been provided through a